word? What is good? <laughs> Where to begin? This is uh, this is so fucking awesome. Um, just just all the synchronicities and the things happening within, and then uh, seeing that mirrored uh, with with so many of us who who really fucking can can feel past uh, you know certain levels, <clears throat> can feel into the real a little bit more than uh, most people. Who are caught up in the uh, the the fake tricks and uh, disengage from the uh, the ma the 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 ma the matrix uh, the the real matrix that that you create. So first of all, shout out to fucking zigzag, dude. You, that that fucking part two, the last video that that you put out. Um, oh, <laughs> that that got me fucking fired up. But I I've already done so many videos with <clears throat> with, with you as the focal point, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm not gonna do another one. Don't do another one, even though I was like, god damn it, I want to do another one. That dude, that that fucking video was like one of the best YouTube videos I've ever fucking watched. And I'm not just fucking saying that to say it. Like, dude, that was the shit. Thank you. Fucking amazing. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna watch this video. That I got from uh, <coughs> Sky Life, and I'll uh, share a link to her uh, channel as well. And, I, and I've shared her stuff before as well, uh, s with uh, her going to uh, actually going to Wim Hof, and uh, the experiences with that. So I mean, she fucking goes in deep, and she's, you know, she, she's. She's a fucking human, and she shares her humanness, and it's fucking beautiful. And, uh, she started talking about this, uh, doctor. And I'm like, wait a second. Didn't I just fucking, uh, get this video from this guy? And I'm like, wait a second. So <laughs> I went back. Boom, here it is. The synchronicities will guide you and lead you to the places. Um, <laughs> that your heart knows where you need to be. And uh, where the greatest teaching is, is going to come from is... It's not outside of you. It's an inner standing. It's an inner process. And the the guiding that happens is, is through this these synchronicities that happen with your experience, with connecting with other people of like mind and like heart and allowing yourself to be guided into that flow. And uh, wherever it takes you, it doesn't. It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> it's not like you, you don't pinpoint this kind of destination shit. Destination unknown. You go with the flow, and that's that's the fucking beauty of it. And this guy, what's his fucking name? The doctor. Joe Dispenza. I've never seen anything from him before, but then uh, I saw this and I'm like, yep, he gets it. So uh, we'll share some of this. And then as per usual, I have a card at the end that it just kind of flopped out. I didn't do my 3-3 three, three and 3 ritual with it. And uh, I'm like, yep, 
<laughs> that, that's what's needed. Yep. But uh, right at the beginning here, I'm like, this guy's talking about what, what Zigzag was talking about with, with, with the mind and uh, the potentiality and uh, the perception. Uh, I mean, right there, like, the, the wired, you know. And then I'll also throw in uh, some things about like uh, shamanics in with this as well, and uh, utilizing plant spirit medicines to help help guide us, help remind us of what we have access to, what we have been led astray from, that that is within, and uh, not to get caught up in in any one thing, in any uh, one modality, in any one uh, mindset, religion ideology no like you we utilize things to help remind us what is inside help remind us of the truth and like that's that's you know everyone goes through their layers and, and the densities of this and and breaking down the barriers and going through different filters and uh, integrating and transmuting and getting into a clearer and clearer refinement, this refinement process, getting closer and closer to a 2020 vision. Brain could only see equal to how it's wired. If the brain, if there's no circuitry for patterns in the brain, then you don't see reality. Right? It's called pattern recognition. So then, how do we begin to see things that exist but we don't have the circuitry to perceive? Right? In other words, we don't see things how they are. We see things how we are. So you spend the majority of your life narrowing your focus on everything material in this three-dimensional reality. You see objects, you see things, you see people, you see bodies, you see places, and our senses plug us into the three-dimensional reality. So everything that's known to us is wired in our thinking neocortex. <clears throat> this is the programming. And this is uh, also why we have to deprogram uh, the program that has been subjected to us, has been indoctrinated, and we have been led to uh, fall prey to. And how, how, to we, how do we go about rewiring and uh, remapping not just these uh, connections, not, not just within the, the physical, but uh, what does it stem from? Where is the roots? And uh, once again, Zigzag talked about the roots and uh, I often talk about the root causalities of things. Pay attention to where those are, and that's going to guide you into the direct experience, the direct connection. You don't have to uh, play the guessing game or, or go about any kind of drama bullshit because you see things for how it is. You see why things are, are manifesting how they are. And you can respond accordingly. You don't have to get caught up in the bullshit. You see, potentially, maybe why something is being projected at you. What what that other or mirror is reflecting back at you. What is inside of you that hasn't been dealt with yet. This is the key. And transforming a reality, transforming uh, into a clearer vision uh, where, where separation just dissolves more and more. So there are many ways to engage these connections and to have them Filter down into the physical, because first it starts with a feeling, and then that feeling is uh, picked up upon on on our receptors, 
and then that signal is transported throughout the system, the body. And uh, if that if that system has bad receptor sites, has bad connectors, then we're only going to get so much of the signal, and only so much of it is going to uh, stick with us as well. Uh, memory. So how do we strengthen and create more connection sites? Well, how do we engage? What are the what are the ways to engage? We can we can engage the mind. We we can engage um, a felt connection with with inspiration, with music. What brings us great uh, joy and uh, maybe brings us to tears because of, of how beautiful something is. And these are great uh, tools to to build and strengthen connections um, with with the heart and the mind. <clears throat> Utilizing certain herbs, certain fungi, certain roots also help with this stimming. With with like if if you look at the the structure of nerves, they, they look like root systems. They they look like trees. Utilizing the roots and turmeric, ginseng, ginger, and then utilizing the connective tissue, the the mycelium network that, that also aids in connecting all this root structure of the earth. Reishi, cordyceps. Lion's mane, shiitake, and then if you want to get really, really down into the direct experience, utilizing the psilocybin, and you can look up for yourself uh, what psilocybin does um, to the brain. It it makes the brain come alive. Uh, it makes the receptor sites come out, come alive. But as with anything, you have to do the inner work and the cultivation yourself. Otherwise, that the memory, the the connection, isn't going to last. What do we do to help the connectivity last? We constantly engage. We we utilize things like meditation, and it's a certain focus. You know, this meditation is an umbrella term because life is meditation. So it's a certain focus, a certain kind of engagement. Utilizing the polarities as well. Utilizing extreme heat. Utilizing extreme cold. This this strengthens. Our system. It allows the system to rejuvenate itself. And, and to allow a uh, push and pull effect to happen. Uh, it allows a cleansing effect to happen as well, and, and so eventually, you know, more connectivity is allowed, more bandwidth is allowed through these pathways. Mm -hmm. 
So what we're seeing, and it's happened to me so many times, let's say you have a profound mystical experience. There's four states of consciousness. There's wakefulness, there's sleep, there's dreaming, and then there's a transcendental moment. Now that transcendental <coughs> There's, there's the triune, so there's those three, and then the, the, the transcendental, the, the transcendence is the awareness that happens, that we connect and unite all of these things, and we are able to swim within all of what we have access to. You may have heard of transcendental meditation. Well, this is what I'm talking about with the focus. A certain focus within a meditative state to where you transcend your normal state of awareness and perceptivity into a more inner awareness, an awareness of what is happening whenever you are able to disengage from being so caught up within the physicality of it, uh, of your body, of, of the sensation. You disengage from that and what is left? You, you enter the void and the darkness. And then your journey really begins. And you see how deep the rabbit hole goes. And it's up to you how deep you want to go in the, in the rabbit hole. The dental moment is something that we have been working to induce. In fact, we now know we can induce it. We've measured it. We know the pineal gland and certain areas of the brain become... Okay, that right there is some... Is some uh... Oh my god. If you wanted to talk about transcendental states and mystical states, and then he says that, he he hasn't done enough inner work there, not evidently, <laughs> or or he's just you know skimming upon the the, the surface and, and the tip of the iceberg there for people, which is definitely something that we do uh, to to help. Uh, catch certain people's awarenesses and then kind of not give too much too soon for people and help them help ease them in uh, into into the depths to where they are afraid of going this is very much a taught fear that that has that has been uh, perpetuated here so we're coming out of this taught indoctrinated fear of going within and uh, this is I I'm seeing more and more of this coming to a head of people so afraid to go within that they are full on projecting upon people who, who actually do the work and, and it's to the point like to uh, super extremes to where I have to be careful, um, even for my own well-being, with, with certain individuals who, who are so, uh, have so much psychosis and disconnect. It, it's, it's interesting how, how to navigate this. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's... Once I take myself out of the equation, it's it's actually very miraculous. You know, the things that happen, the things that are just seamless. Active that the limbic brain all of a sudden moves into high high frequencies. And a person has a full-on sensory experience without their senses. In other words, whatever is going on between their ears is more real than anything they've ever experienced before. 
So if your senses are heightened, you know, right now, if everything you were seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, uh, if your senses were heightened, your awareness of everything around you would be heightened as well. Well, awareness is consciousness. We can't have consciousness without energy. So... And this is the thing with, with, with a lot of people. It's like they, they go back and forth with um, knowingness and unknowingness and not really being able to tap into a direct communion um, because they're so caught up in, you know, uh, feeling the need to express. And so they form certain mentalities and ideologies of, around experiences that aren't necessarily completely accurate but because of the need to share and express or the need to keep up a certain you know hype or, or whatever um, it comes out as a diluted version uh, of uh, the experience that they had even Awareness is consciousness. No, absolutely not. So this is this is this this thing you know that we have to be on guard about is not just the wordage, but but how people choose to utilize. Bringing a image, siphoning it down into this this fucking thing, this language that we've been taught, and then choosing to connect with the heart, the felt experience. Conscious awareness. Everything's conscious, but are you aware of the consciousness? It's not the same thing, because most people have very little awareness. More and more people are becoming very robotic. Because of the lack of awareness and disconnect of consciousness conscious awareness so in a sense then a person has a transcendental experience and they start interacting with beings that are not physical if they have that really profound experience that experience is going to be locked in their brain because experience images their brain yes This is absolutely true, and a lot of times, you know, when, whenever we have, like, a deep, profound experience, you know, just, just try to think back, you know, what makes memory stick for you? Is it, uh, what variables are at play? What emotions are at play that make the memory stick? So once again, we come back to feeling deep, heartfelt connection with the image, and blam, a memory sticks. experience, that experience is going to be logged in their brain, because experience images their brain, yes? So if your senses are heightened, you know, right now, if everything you were seeing, you're... they start interacting with beings that are not physical, if they have that... Okay, <laughs> there we go. Um... In this... 
kind of ties back into some experiences I've had, um, especially with, with people lately inquiring things. Um, these uh, quote unquote beings. They're not, they're not outside of you. So uh, whenever you're really able to have a cultivated awareness to where you have dissolved the levels of separation and you can engage deeply into these quote-unquote transcendental states, uh, these quote-unquote beings are, are not going to be um, anything separate from you. You're going to see them for what they are because you're going to see them as a, a reflection of what you are. Uh, a reflection of maybe a certain specific aspect of what you need to see within yourself. As within, so without. That That's how it's always going to be. The question is, can you see it for what it is? So yeah, I'll, I'll leave a link to the rest of this so that you guys can watch it as well. But uh, now I'll read from the card. It's a beautiful card, so I wanted to try to get as much of the imagery as I could. And then once again, like, here we go with the uh, synchronicities in reading this. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Key words. Using darkness to empower yourself. Watchfulness trickster behavior. Many cultures view the raven as a supernatural messenger. The Norse associated the raven with Odin, the ruler of the gods. Every day Odin sent two ravens, Hugin, thought, and Munin, memory to fly about the earth as his spies. Yet many cultures see the raven as an ominous symbol of death and misfortune. The Celtic war goddess of Morrigan was believed to circle over battlefields in the form of a raven. <laughs> More positively, of the native peoples of the Pacific Northwest Think of the raven as a creator spirit, who also functions as a trickster. One legend tells how raven tricks a sky chief to bring light to this world. And this chief treasured two things, his cedar box, which contained the moon and the sun, and his beautiful daughter. Clever raven arranged to be reborn as the daughter's baby. Knowing the chief wouldn't be able to resist his own grandson, baby raven cried and cried for the precious box until the sky chief gave in, thus bringing light from the darkness. 
when the raven card appears. It is as an invitation to get comfortable with your darker side. How can you use it to reach your goals? And, and well beyond that, what can you see within those darker aspects? What is revealed to you about yourself, about the self, about the separation of... <laughs> about the illusion of separation? The raven is keen, the raven is very cunning, and the raven is very timely. Right when you need a message, that is when the raven will appear. So pay attention to your inner landscape. Because that is going to be your greatest guidepost into how to navigate what is happening outside of you. Because it's all the fucking same thing, people. Realize it. Feel it. Be it. Peace.